Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Batman Catwoman wedding reaction video. If you guys didn't know, this is the 16th time that Batman has been married or tried to get married in the comics. So obviously, spoiler warning, if you have not read the story yet, there was a big story going around last week because the New York Times supposedly spoiled the ending of the story. But the current writer on Batman, Tom King, the person who's the architect of all this, said that issue 50, which is the wedding issue, is only the halfway point in a Batman Catwoman arc that's going to last for 100 issues. So he compared this issue to the moment in Empire Strikes Back where Han Solo's gun gets ripped out of his hand by Darth Vader. We would be honored if you would join us. Hopefully that doesn't mean that Batman's going to get frozen by Mr. Freeze in a couple more issues and then sold to the Penguin and put up as a decoration in the Iceberg Lounge. But if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's going to be a bunch more DC happening really soon. Because it's a wedding issue, I will do a new round of that Flash Ring giveaway too. All you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. The real big conversation the last couple of days was on the ending of the issue where, you know, obviously we're in spoiler territory now. So just careful for spoilers one more time. Catwoman decides that Batman needs his misery if she tries to make him happy. She's worried that it will break him. He won't be Batman anymore, and he won't be able to bring hope to people the way he has in the past. So she bails on the wedding, and this is issue 50. Remember, 100-issue arc, but then the teaser at the end is, is that we find that Bane has been the architect of this entire 50-issue run where he slowly realizes that he loves Catwoman, proposes, then they try to get married. He engineered that plan to fail so that he could, you know, quote unquote, break the bat. So he's sitting up on his perch there. And you see Holly Robinson kneel down to him like she's been doing this in service of him. Like she was the one that planted the idea in Catwoman's mind. I always kind of felt like Batman needed his misery. Then a little light bulb goes on above Selena Kyle's head like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe Batman does need his misery. Then you see all the other people standing around there. You have the Joker, you have the Riddler, and it looks like even though they had this big lead up with all the different characters interacting with Batman, like you had this whole big arc about villains being upset about how Batman was going to change because of this wedding. Even just a little while ago, the Joker was threatening to crash the wedding. He was really upset because he felt like his relationship with Batman took precedent and he felt like he needed Batman to be Batman. I could destroy the entire city and I need Batman to stop me. It was probably one of the best Joker issues that I've ever read. But now you find out that it almost seems like he was doing this in service of whatever Bane's plan was. Probably the biggest Easter egg is you look over here and you see what looks like Thomas Wayne in his Batman costume standing in Bane's lineup. And you're like, wait a minute, didn't we watch him die during the button crossover? Like there was this whole backstory with him getting to meet his father, the Flashpoint father, where he says, don't be Batman anymore, go be happy. He told him to stop being Batman. Now it seems like that was all part of Bane's plan, which just blows your mind because that was actually a really big crossover issue with the Flash. So it seems like Bane has just gotten the bright idea that he can break the Batman more effectively if he does it emotionally, like breaking his body isn't enough because Batman will always keep coming back but you give him a deep emotional scar, that might wound him even more. But I think the idea is, is that we don't know how Batman's going to react to this. So he's like, well, back to the grind. And then that's the last you hear of him because the rest of the issue is them revealing this big Bane twist. I think a good example of this is in Batman Returns with the way they leave the Catwoman-Batman relationship. Like they imply that he knows she's out there somewhere. They still care about each other. You have to imagine that a version of this relationship that Tom King is playing out is playing out in this universe too. Just to address the New York Times spoiler from a couple days ago, I wasn't quite as upset about it as a lot of people. I think mostly because it confirmed what I felt about the Batman character. Like, it would be a little weird if they tried to do the exact same thing they did with Superman, Lois Lane, and John Kent, where they're like this happy little family. Like, they do have a family, but it's an unconventional family, and I think that's one of the reasons why it works. 
Batman does kind of need his misery, but he can at the same time also be happy. So I think, you know, early prediction for the end of this 100 issue arc is that he and Catwoman do wind up together. They don't get married in the conventional sense, but they do remain a couple in the way they have been in the past. Like they've always had chemistry. They've always been destined to be together, but not necessarily in the conventional Superman or even Barry Allen, Iris West kind of way. So issue 100, if that's going to be the end of this Tom King run, they wind up together, but maybe there's a little bit of eye winking in an ambiguous type of wedding moment where you could say that kind of they're married, but not really. There's always this weird line that you walk with Batman, like it always did feel like it was kind of off limits to get him married, despite the fact that he's been married 15 times before in the comics. The thing is though, is that most of those never stuck or they were taking place in alternate universes. So like you have him getting married to Earth 2 Catwoman, or they did this Elseworld story where you see an alternate version of Batman and Catwoman grow old together. They sort of find ways to give you that story without necessarily trampling on main continuity. Like this is the regular version of Batman. He needs his misery. He can't get married, but he can totally get it on with Catwoman till the end of time. And they can be together, just not in the way that you would think, you know, other superheroes getting married the conventional way would. I think a lot of that just goes into the DC characters respective origins and their most popular arcs. Those mostly define the way you think about what a character would do, what a character would not do. Like throughout the history of DC Comics, Barry Allen has always had a pretty solid marriage to Iris West. There hasn't been a whole lot of drama between the two of them, even though he died during Infinite Crisis. So Iris became more of like this old woman advisor, but they had children in the future called the Tornado Twins. So you do have a lot of conventional superhero relationships where they get married, they have children, they eventually die, the children take over. But I think part of the appeal of the Batman character is, is in how untraditional he is and how he makes his really hodgepodge family work. Like you have Damien, the circumstances of his existence are also really twisty, his relationship with Talia al Ghul. I was also a fan of the way Tom King wrote Talia during this arc when she found out that Batman had gotten engaged. So remember, now that you had the issue where they sort of break things off, the rest of the Bat family can react to it. Like you can find out how Batman deals with it. Like, how is Nightwing going to deal with Batman being left at the altar? How is Damien going to deal with it? The funniest thing from the issue, though, like, it's not all seriousness, is watching Alfred almost ready to cry at every moment. Like, this whole time, he's so happy because he's raised Bruce by himself. So he's kind of like his surrogate father. He tells him, it's always been us, Alfred. I couldn't do anything without you. And he just kind of breaks down. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about this whole Batman Catwoman wedding? And do you believe that Batman needs his misery in order to bring people hope? But what's going to happen is, is I learned a whole bunch about Titans. There was a recent interview that one of the characters did, so I'll do a video for that soon. I'll announce a new winner when I post new DC. There might be some new Rick and Morty tonight too, so just look out for that. But click here to learn all about Titans Episode 1, and click here to learn about all the deleted scenes that are going to be on the Infinity War Blu-ray. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.